introduction. Uh, next speaker is uh, Luna Lomonaco from IMPA. She is going to talk about on a family of correspondence. Welcome, Luna. Uh, this is off, I guess. No, yeah. This is on. Yes. Can you hear me? Good. Okay. I will also leave the remarks about Jaco at the end. And I will speak about a specific family of correspondences. Correspondences are complicated objects. And we will see that there exists a particular family of correspondences where dynamically we can join the world of iteration of rational maps and of Kleinian groups. And this is a joint work with Schumbullet. So, the iteration of a rational map on the Riemann sphere gives a, dynamic, a dynamically meaningful partition of the Riemann sphere into complementary set. Uh, one is the FATU set, which is the set of point around which um, the family of iterates is normal or uh, equivalently equicontinuous, and the Julia set, which is the complementary where the dynamics is chaotic. The easiest rational maps are polynomials. And for any polynomial of degree greater or equal to, infinity is super attracting, fixed point. And it is a basing of attraction, which we denote A, P for the polynomial of infinity. And we can define the field in Julia set for the polynomial as the complement of the basing of attraction of infinity. This is the set of points with bounded orbit. Um, the quadratic family is the family zeta square plus c for c in the complex plane. And here I draw the field in Julia set for several members. For zeta square, c equals zero. It's, this is the field in Julia set. For c equal one quarter. And for c equal one quarter plus epsilon. So we can define the connectedness locus of the family as being the set of parameters for which the field in Julia set is connected. In the case of the quadratic family, the connectedness locus is called the Mandelbrot set and it's this object. So zero is a parameter per which the, connect, uh, the field Julia set is connected, lives inside here. One quarter lives inside here at the cusp. And one quarter plus epsilon lives here outside. On the other hand, a uh, cleaning group is a discrete subgroup of PSL to C. So we have a set of Mavis transformation acting on the Riemann sphere, and we compose them in all possible ways. And we see what happens. And uh, this action also gives a partition of the Riemann sphere into a completely invariant set. The ordinary set, which is the sets of points around which the elements form a normal family, and the limit set that there is that is the complement. Arguably, the easiest Kleinian group, or at least one of the most studied, is the modular group, PSL to Z, which is the group generated by these two maps. Tau one of Z, zeta plus one, and tau one of tau two of zeta, which is zeta over one plus zeta. And here is a tessellation of the modular group on the upper half plane. Here is a fundamental domain. And for any other set that you see here, bounded by these lines, there is a, a combination of tau, tau one and tau two and inverses sending the fundamental domain to the set. So 
these two words are not actually so different. And actually Sullivan in the 80s started realizing it. And he started writing what is being uh, called later as Sullivan Dictionary, which is a dictionary relating these two words. On one side, we have the word of iteration of rational maps on the Riemann sphere. On the other one, the, the word of finitely generated cleaning groups on the Riemann sphere. And uh, the FATU set plays for the theory of rational maps the same paper, the ordinary set, plays in the world of cleaning groups. They actually had the same definition. The biggest uh, set of a key continuity of normality. While the Julia set plays the same uh, role in the theory of rational maps as the limit set for cleaning groups. And well, this is the very, 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 very beginning of Sullivan Dictionary, but for this talk, it's enough. These two words are not this different, and actually there exists an object uh, that can be both, can be a group and can be a rational map. These options are called correspondences. A correspondence is a multi-valued map. And a holomorphic correspondence, a N to M holomorphic correspondence is the implicit map defined by a polynomial relation P zeta W equals zero of degree N in zeta and M in W. So the correspondence is the object that associates zeta to W such that P of zeta F of zeta is equal to zero. And uh, I'm telling you this because correspondences generalizes rational maps and cleaning groups. If we have a rational map, f of zeta equal p of zeta over q of zeta, we can write it as a n to one correspondence, taking as polynomial p zeta of w equal w q of zeta minus p of zeta. On the other hand, if we have a Kleinian group with n generators, we can write it as a n to n correspondence by writing this polynomial expression. So in particular, we can write the modular group as a two, two correspondence because the modular group has two generators. Okay, so a correspondence can be a rational map, in particular a polynomial, and it can be the modular group. But can it be both at the same time? I mean, can I find a correspondence uh, such that the dynamics gives a partition of the Riemann sphere into a invariant? domains where on a domain it behaves like the model group and in the other domain it behaves like a polynomial or a quadratic map. In technical words, we will say, can we mate in a correspondence the modular group and quadratic maps? What is a mating? A mating between two objects. A and B is a third object, C, that behaves like A on a completely invariant subset of the domain and like B on the complement. Mating exists both in the world of polynomials. Uh, under certain conditions, you can mate the two polynomials and obtain a rational map and they exist in the world of cleaning groups. 
but what would it be a mating between a quadratic map and the modular group? Well, this will be a holomorphic correspondence because you need an object that it's, at least can be both. And it will be a two, two correspondence, oh, sorry. It should be a two, two correspondence because the modular group written as correspondence is a two, two correspondence. And uh, it will be such that the dynamics of this correspondence uh, gives a partition of the sphere into completely invariant subset, one set where the action of my correspondence is conjugated to the generators of the modular group. This is the two branches, one branch to one to one branch to the other. And the complement will be the limit set composed by two sets, a backward and a forward limit set. On one, my correspondence will be conjugated to the action of a polynomial, quadratic polynomials. And on the other one will be conjugated to the action of the inverse of the polynomial. This is for making the correspondence two, two. Okay? Do they exist? When we ask about matings, uh, this comes with two questions. Can we mate an object, uh, two objects? I mean, can we fit two objects together? Uh, and do this mating exist? So, in the, can we mate quadratic polynomials with the modular group? This means, do quadratic polynomials and the modular group actually fit together? Does it exist a homeomorphism conjugating the action of a polynomial on the Julia set? This is the um, doubling map with the generators of the modular group on the real line. And if yes, there exists some correspondence that could realize them. And on the other hand, we have the question, do mating exist? Is there a correspondence that actually is a mating between a quadratic map and the modular group? Is there a family of correspondences such that every member is a mating? And even better, in this case, would the connectedness locus of this family be homeomorphic to the Mandelbrot set? So, at the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s, Sean Bullet, uh, together with Chris Penrose, figured out that, yes, we can mate. The dynamics fit together. There exists a map, the Minkowski map, uh, from the positive real line to the unit interval, which is a homeomorphism, which sends a positive real number represented by the continuous fraction expansion, x0, x1, x2, blah, meaning that is x0 plus 1 over x1 plus 1 over blah, 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 to the binary number obtained by putting 0 dot x0 enters of 1, uh, followed by x1 enter of 0, followed by x2 enter of 1, and so go. And this map, plus a modification of it, conjugates the action of the generators of the modular group on the negative real line with the doubling map and on the positive real line with the halfing map. So, reassured by this, they made a topological construction. They took two copies of your favorite connected and locally connected field in Julia set. For me, it's the field in Julia set of zeta square because it's easier to draw. They glue them together at this point, at the repelling fixed point on the boundary. In this case, it's one. 
and they put on one the dynamics of the polynomial, on the other one the dynamics of the inverse of the polynomial, and then they wrapped around here the upper half plane with the dynamics of the modular group, gluing these two sets by the Minkowski map. Zero went here. The negative real line goes here around with minus infinity, and the positive real line here with plus infinity. Amazingly, they figure out that you end up in a one parameter family of holomorphic 2 2 correspondences, namely given by this polynomial relation. So they proved that the matings between quadratic polynomials uh, with connecting Philly and Julia set and the modular group lie in this family of correspondences. This is the limit set for one of these guys, for A equal uh, 3 plus uh, square root of three, 33 over 2. And moreover, they proved that for all A in this real interval, for 7, and this is 4.4 more or less, the, correspond the um, dynamics of the correspondence gives a partition of the sphere into complete invariant set, an open one, where the dynamics of my correspondence is conjugated to the generators of the modular group and a complement, a, which consists of two sets connected by a point. And here are several limit sets for this family of correspondences. And this is the connectedness locus. And now you can wonder, how did they cook up this family? Well, we want a correspondence to act like a group on the ordinary set and like a polynomial on the limit set. In particular, we want the correspondence having a limit set, right? The problem is that a general 2-2 uh, two -two correspondence uh, has a graph that looks more or less like this. Every point has two image, every and the two pre-images, I didn't draw all the uh, arrows because in other case it becomes a mess, and it becomes a mess. In particular, we can expect a lot of dense orbits and no limit sets. So, a possible solution is to close up this diagram, imposing this condition. From a, a one forward and one backward, you can just do this. This is what shown calls maps of triples. And if you have a map of triples, this implies that your correspondence factorizes as the delete covering correspondence of a cubic polynomial composed by a Möbius transformation. What does it mean? Let Q be the polynomial, cubic polynomial, sending zeta 1, zeta 2, and zeta 3 to the same point. The deleted covering correspondence will send zeta 1 to the other two roots, zeta 2 and zeta 3. And the Möbius transformations sends the zeta i to the wi. They ask the polynomial, they fix the polynomial to be zeta uh, cubic minus 3 zeta, and they ask the Möbius transformation to be an involution. This is for making uh, the map of triples, what Sean calls a reversible map of triples. The involution conjugates uh, the action of your correspondence to the action of the inverse of the correspondence. And this is because the limit set I showed you before are all symmetric. 
And finally, they ask, well, an involution on the Riemann sphere has two fixed points. One is A, the parameter, and the other one, they put it at a critical point of Q, one. This is because all the limit set I showed you are connected. So how this family works? Well, the cubic polynomial zeta to the three minus three zeta sends the critical point one to minus two, which is a fixed point. So it sends these three blue lines, ta, ta, and ta, to the same line. So the deleted covering correspondence sends each blue line to the other two. And it interchange, therefore, this set sends to this and this one, this sends to this and this one, and this up and down. So this part is a fundamental domain for my covering correspondence. Then we put an involution. The involution fix one and an A, it leaves invariant the circle passing through them and interchanges the inside with the outside. So the outside of this disk is a fundamental domain for my involution. And this intersection, this croissant-like region, it's a fundamental domain for my correspondence. How do we find the limit sets? Well, let's start here inside the disk. The covering, the deleted covering correspondence sends what is here inside, outside, here and here, and the evolution brings it back inside. So restricted to this disk, my correspondence is a one to two, well, not map, object, or whatever, okay? While outside of the disk, the inverse. The evolution conjugates the correspondence to its inverse, so restrict it to the outside of the disk. My correspondence uh, behaves as a two-to-one map. Okay? And then I have a brain branch sending this part inside. So I'm going to show you the same picture, just changing coordinates, and made by a computer and not by paint. So, just one sec. The red circle became the imaginary axis in this picture. The correspondence restricted on the right plane it's a one to two map. This is the forward limit set. And the correspondence restricted to this side is a two to one map. And this is the forward limit set. Well, it's a two to one map everywhere, but at this point. And this is the pre-image of the, the intersection point. And both branches of the correspondence sends a neighborhood of this guy to a neighborhood of this guy. And we will see, this is very annoying, we will see this after. For everybody in the family, this point is a parabolic fixed point. And the problematic point is the pretty much. Okay. They conjecture that the family FA contains matings between the modular group and every quadratic polynomial with connected Julia set. And in particular, that the connectedness locus for this family is homeomorphic to the Mandelbrot set. Sorry, who is BP? Huh? Conjecture BP? BP, sorry, is Bullet Penrose. Yeah. It's all in this big paper, it's in Invenciones 94. Yeah, this uh, B, B is always bullet. And uh, since then, I mean, there has been kind of a lot of work. And uh, in, 
a bullet Penrose plus bullet Harvey plus bullet Siski, uh, they prove that there exists a mating between the modular group and quadratic polynomial for a large class of parameter C. These results are all perturbative. The family FA has a persistent parabolic fixed point here. And the previous theorems are proved in the following way. They perturb the correspondence. Uh, your involution do not have a fixed point at one anymore. You break it. You apply polynomial-like mapping, that is a super useful theory that tells you that if something is a polynomial-like mapping, it's conjugated to a polynomial. And then they do a surgery for coming back. Well, it's not particularly optimal. This suggests that the family FA may consist of matings between modular group and a family of quadratic rational maps with a persistent parabolic fixed point. And what is a family of quadratic rational map with a persistent parabolic fixed point? It's the family per 1, 1. It's the family of PA of zeta equal zeta plus 1 over zeta plus A with A a complex number. For every A, infinity, it's a parabolic fixed point. It has a basing of attraction, which is completely invariant. And therefore, we can define a field in Julia set for this guy, being the complement of the basing of attraction of the parabolic fixed point. And here is the field in Julia set for this is A equals 0. And it was the only parameter that I knew by heart. And uh, the connectedness locus for this family, which is the family of A for which uh, PA is, has a connected field in Julia set, is the parabolic Mandelbrot set, which is this guy. So he lives here. This guy lives here, and this guy lives here. And actually, the parabolic, the parabolic Mandelbrot set is homeomorphic to the Mandelbrot set by a result by Karsten Peterson and Pascal Hoche. So now the game becomes, since we have a candidate family of uh, maps with a persistent parabolic fixed point, is the family of correspondences that I showed you a family of matings between these maps and the modular group? Yes, they are. So we define a mating between the rational quadratic maps PA and the modular group to be a true to correspondence such that in um, the dynamics of the correspondence give a partition of the sphere into invariant set on one open the correspondence is conjugated to the generators of the modular, modular group and on the other one in the backward limit set it's conjugated to the uh, PA on the field in Julia set therefore we know that on lambda on the other part is going to be conjugated with the inverse and uh, we proved, we've shown that for every A in the connectedness locus, the correspondence is a mating between some rational map of this form and the modular group. And this is a representation <laughs> of the theorem. We have we have that uh, this correspondence. Here, I can conjugate hybridly, actually, quasi-conformally, the map, the correspondence uh, here to um, P0. Um, by the way, a hybrid 
I didn't say. Hybrid conjugacy is, the conjugation is hybrid, which means that it's quasi-conformal and conformal on the interior of the field in Julia set. Okay, so this is hybrid conjugate to this guy, this one to this guy, this one to this guy, and outside we know that we have the action of the modular group. We still would like to say that this guy is homeomorphic to this one. But in order to go there, I will tell you a little bit how, just an idea of how to prove the theorem. So for proving the theorem, we pass from correspondences to some object which, which is called parabolic like map, and from parabolic like map to per one one. Why? Because, well, a degree uh, two is the only degree we see here. Parabolic like map is an object that locally behaves like a map PA on a neighborhood of its field in Julia set. And why I'm telling you this? Because in my PhD thesis, I proved that a degree two parabolic like map is hybrid conjugated to a member of the family per one one. A unique such a member if the ju field Julia set is connected. So, if we prove that for all parameters in the connectedness locus, my, the branch that fixes the backward limit set restricts to a parabolic like map, we are done. Okay? So, this is the game. And now you will ask, uh, what is a parabolic like map? <laughs> so, a parabolic like map is an object that behaves like a member of per one one about the field in Julia set. The field in Julia set is by definition the complement of the parabolic basing of attraction of this point. So outside the black set, the dynamics is more or less how I try to draw. I mean, from here, I'm going out and out, out, and then I come back here, inside. So. If I take a neighborhood of the field in Julia set, and if I want to take a pre-image, well, on this side, the pre-image will be inside, and on this side, the pre-image will be outside, right? Because this is the dynamics in the complement. And PA sends this set properly holomorphically with degree two into this bigger one. Well, we still need something more because a, a parabolic like map is a local object and I want to define the field in Julia set as a set of points that never escape some domain. But here I have a basing of attraction. So I mean, the pre-image of these guys will go pop, 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 pop. I need to cut it out. So, I define invariant arrays, I have a row cycles around the parabolic fixed point, for saying that the field in Julia set is the set of points that never leave this part. And if I have a parabolic like map, I have a member of pair one one. So the game is turning these guys into a parabolic like map. Let's take a neighborhood of this guy. Well, I take a, a neighborhood and the pre-image looks, looks kind of how it should be. Because here I have a two to one map. Everywhere but at this point. The annoying part here is that this neighborhood of my parabolic uh, pre-image of the parabolic fixed point is sent one to two on this set. And it's annoying because this is not a map. I want a map. So what I do? Well, I try to kill an image. Well, here is big. This line is sent to all this line, and the same, this line is sent to all of this. So, this 
is sent on this side by one branch, ah, and on the other side by the other branch. Maybe it's better if I do it here. So this is sent here by one branch and here by the other branch. So we want to kill an image, this one. And for doing it, it's actually easier to kill the pre-image of the inverse map. So we look at the inverse map, and we have that this part is sent here, and this part is sent here. And it's a holomorphic degree two map, so it's basically up to normalization zeta square what it goes from here to here. So what's the game? We want to keep a part, a sector less than pi, which will be sent to a sector less than two pi, and then we want to interpolate here for killing it. By a quasi-conformal surgery. For doing this, uh, well, I mean, we want to do it uh, without touching the limit set because we want uh, my limit set to be the same. I started with. So a technical condition we need is that my limit set is contained in some set with a sector, forming a sector at the parabolic fixed point less than pi. Because this will be the sector that we, we will keep and we will kill the, the other. Okay? Uh, Sufficient, sufficient condition is the limit set to be contained in a loon. Not because I'm called Luna, but because it works. What is a loon? A loon is a rugby ball, like this one. The intersection of two discs. And doing this one by one is easy peasy, because I mean, for every uh, correspondence you have, you can modify as you wish, and you apply the theorem, and you get, you, you apply uh, my PhD thesis and you get the main theorem. But now we want to do it uh, with some uniformicity with respect to the parameter because we want to prove that the connectedness lock is homeomorphic, right? We want this guy to be homeomorphic to the parabolic Mandelbrot set. For doing this, we want to do the surgery in some kind of uniform way. We want to do some kind of holomorphic motion construction, then our surgery, and then, then another holomorphic motion, and blah, 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 it will work. But for doing it, we need my limit set to be contained in a loon moving holomorphically with the parameters. And the technical condition, sufficient condition, is the limit set, uh, the connectedness locus to be contained in a loop. Spoiler. If the connectedness locus is contained in a loop, then we proved uh, for every A in the connectedness locus, the limit set is contained in a loop which uh, moves holomorphically with the parameter and we will do holomorphic motion arguments and we will win. So the game is we want to close this guy inside a loon. For doing this, we need to know that these limbs shrink. I mean, it's kind of clear from the picture that the problematic point is here, right? So I need to know that these limbs 
do not go out. And for this, I need what is called a Gyokut's inequality, which is an inequality that actually tells you how big these limbs can be. And uh, in order for getting this, we ended up developing a whole dynamical theory for these guys that parallels completely the dynamical theory done by Duadier and Hubbard of quadratic polynomials. And I'm kind of amazed by this. It's one of the things I'm most proud of. In the polynomial dynamics, we have that every quadratic polynomial has a butcher map with connected to the Julia set that conjugates uh, the action of the polynomial outside the field in Julia set to the action of zeta square, the leading term, outside the unit disk. In our case, we have a butcher map that for every member of the family conjugates the action of the, the two branches of the correspondence outside the limit set to the generators of the modular group on the upper half plane. Now, uh, you can pull back by the butcher map what is called the external rays for quadratic polynomials. If this is my quadratic polynomial, and I have my butcher map that is conjugating uh, the dynamics of the outside to the dynamics of the outside to the dynamics of zeta square outside of the unit disk. Outside of the unit disk, I have, I can take infinite rays with a fixed angle. And the pullback by this map of these rays are called external rays. In quadratic case, external rays, if they are periodic, land. And uh, every repelling periodic point, uh, actually, is the landing point of a uh, periodic ray. In our case, well, we have also the other part, but we have a map conjugating the outside. Maybe it's better if I do it again. the upper half plane. On the upper half plane with the modular group, I have geodesics. And some geodesics are periodic. And I can pull them back by this butcher map. And in our case, we proved that periodic geodesics land. And that every periodic, repelling periodic point, a, is the landing point of a periodic geodesic. And in the quadratic polynomial, you use this for getting a Yoko's inequality. And we use this, in our case, for getting a Yoko's inequality, which is actually better than the original one. And you can see it. I mean, the 1 over q uh, and uh, log q over q squared, this difference basically says that the limbs attached to the Mandelbrot set shrink respect to the main component less than these limbs attached here shrink respect to this component. I mean, you can see that the proportion between these guys and the big thing is much smaller than the proportion between these guys and the cardio, right? This is the meaning of this. And then, as the Mandelbrot set is contained in a disk of center zero and right radio two, our connectedness locus is contained in a U. And it's still work in progress, uh, but now that we know it, that our connectedness locus is containing a loom, 
we can find holomorphically moving, moving fundamental domain uh, for our correspondence. So we can move the correspondence holomorphically, doing our surgery and move holomorphically. And the uh, holomorphic motion magic figure out that the two sets are homeomorphic. And this is what I wanted to say, mathematically speaking. <laughs> Should I say something about the, okay. But I also would like to say something about Jacob. And I met Jacob just a, personally uh, just a couple of years ago. But I kind of knew him since much, much longer. The first time I heard the name Jacob Palis, uh, it has been a couple of months after I started my PhD. I went to this very nice conference in San Pedro de Atacama in May 2010. And there there were a lot of people who did or were doing their PhD here. And the way people were speaking about IMPA and about Jacob Palis gave me really a strong impression. And I remember that in my head, Palis became this kind of legendary man working in this kind of legendary institution. And it was a very great honor for me being here today in the legendary institution, speaking for the birthday of the legendary man. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luna, for your talk. Are there any question, comment, or something to say? No? So, uh, before uh, we thank our speaker again, we will do a lottery uh, between the students, and the winner will take this book, The Selected Words of Jacob Palis, just uh, after the, the finish of this talk, just for the students, okay? <laughs> yes, we all are still students, but... <laughs> okay. So thanks, Luna, again.